We turn now to a new topic, which is that of inner products. So the prototype here is the usual dot product on Rn. If you have two vectors in Rn, we know how to take their dot product, and what we get is a scalar. So it's a product of two vectors, and the r output is a scalar, and it's defined by a1 through an dotted with bn through bn as you take a1, b1, plus a2, b2, plus dot, 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 an, bn, the usual dot product, and that's a number. Okay, what properties does this satisfy? Well, if uh, v is a1 through an, notice that uh, v dot v is a1 squared up to an squared, and these are a bunch of real numbers, and their squares makes them greater than or equal to zero. So the dot product of a vector with itself is greater than or equal to zero. And when can the dot product of a vector with itself be actually equal to zero? Well, if the sum of a bunch of numbers is zero, all of the, these are all non-negative. They all have to be equal to zero. So the only way a vector can have a dot product with itself being zero is if the vector is actually zero. So these are all sort of basic properties of the usual dot product in Rn. Uh, another, some other properties of the dot product are the following. Um, notice that uh, if you take um, v dot w, that's the same thing as w dot v. That's obvious from the formula, which is to say the dot product is symmetric. Also, if you take uh, a v1 plus b v2, a linear combination in the v, and dot that with w, you can distribute that across as a v1 dot w plus b v2 dot w. That's also clear from the formula. And that's that property is what's known as bilinearity. So it's linear, and it's linear in both variables. So I've written down the fact that it's linear in the v, and the corresponding thing is if you do it in the other order, it's linear in the second variable. So that's the bi part of the linear. So those two properties together are called bilinear and symmetric. So the, the these are the three main properties of the inner product. Okay, so remember we started talking about, started the course out talking about uh, Rn and we generalized to the notion of a, our general vector space, V. We abstracted the properties of Rn and talked about general vector spaces. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take the usual dot product and we're going to abstract it. And when we do, and we're going to get the notion of a general inner product on a vector space. So, well, I basically told you what it is. And here's the definition. If V is a vector space, an inner product um, on the vector space uh, is a pairing. And what that means is it takes a pair of vectors, V and W, If you're given a pair of vectors v and w um, in the vector space, then we attach to them a number denoted v parentheses w, and this is a scalar. So that's what I mean by a pairing. It's, it attaches to every pair of vectors, ordered pair of vectors, a scalar. And this operation, which takes a pair of vectors to a scalar, is required to satisfy three properties. It's required to be bilinear, and symmetric, and positive definite. And these are just words for the properties of the dot product, which we saw a moment ago. So what are they? Bilinear um, Bilinear is that if you take v and take the inner product of v with a w1 plus b w2, then you get this formula, the 
it's linear in the second variable. And the bilinear, of course, means also in the first variable, in, which is to say in the other order. Uh, symmetric uh, is symmetric, that VW is equal to WV. And positive definite means that if you take a vector V and you take the inner product with itself, it's greater than or equal to zero. And furthermore, it's equal to zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. So the first part of this is the positive, and then the second part is the definite. Um, this here is the definite part of positive definite. OK, so let's see. Let's look at a couple of examples. Well, obviously, the basic example is the dot product in Rn. That's, what we're, that's where we started. If you take v in the parentheses vw to be v dot w, that is an example of an inner product. OK, but what's another one? Well, let's see. Let's write this down explicitly in R2. So um, if you take vectors A, B, and C, D, then their dot product is AC plus BD. OK. So I'm going to now uh, tinker with this formula. On this AC plus BD, I can sprinkle some, some other constants into it. So for example, suppose I took the, I defined the inner product of ABCD to be a different formula. Suppose I took 2AC plus 3BD. So this is a new definition. This is a different example of an inner product. And well, let's check. Is it really an inner product? So let's check the properties. Um, so is it true that uh, a, b, uh, paired, uh, let's check the bilinear property that um, if you put the sum of two vectors in the second coordinate, you can uh, write it like this. So this is um, part of the bilinear condition. So I'll put arrows over the vectors here to sort of help your eye group things appropriately. This says that these two in, in inner products are equal like this. And well, let's see, the left-hand side is the inner product of AB. And when you add these vectors, you get C1 plus C2, D1 plus D2. And by definition, this is A, excuse me, 2A times C1 plus C2 plus 3b times d1 plus d2. And on the other hand, um, I'm hoping that this is equal to uh, 2ac1 plus 3b d1 uh, plus 2ac2 plus 3b d2. So are these two sides equal? Well, let's see. 2ac1 over here matches with 2ac1. And 2AC2 matches with 2AC2. And 3BD1 matches here with 3BD1. And let's see, 3BD2 over here matches with uh, 3BD2 over here. So yes, these are equal. And well, there's several other things along these lines to check for bilinearity, but that's the um, that's the basic one. The others are similar. So in fact, it's bilinear. Uh, and symmetric is clear, but you've got to be careful about positive definite. That's one thing when you check these inner products. Positive definite can go wrong. So let's check. What does it mean uh, to say positive definite? It means if you take the inner product of this vector with itself, you get um, a 2a squared plus 3b squared. and I'm hoping that this is greater than or equal to 0 for all a and b. And that's true, because a squared and b squared are positive. And I'm hoping that it's equal to 0 if and only if a is equal to b is equal to 0. Well, that's also true. So 
I said, you need to be careful, but it's okay. It's, uh, um, this is positive definite. But um, I want to illustrate a non-example by just changing a sign and show, showing what happens. So suppose I tried defining an inner product like this where I took 2AC minus 3BD. So I've just changed this constant here, the, the 3, to uh, a minus 3. And the minus sign is, is the critical thing here. And the symmetric and bilinear are all obvious. And every, everything goes through very easily except for the positive definite part. So that's what I mean about you have to be careful with the positive definite part. So let's check the positive definite condition in this one. Well, if you take the inner product of A, B with itself, what do you get? You get 2A squared minus 3B squared. And now the minus sign is critical here. If you take 0, 1 and take its inner product with itself, you get 0 minus 1 excuse me, 0 minus 3, and that's not positive. So this is not an inner product. It fails the positive definite test. All right, now suppose you have an arbitrary inner product, a vector space with an inner product VW. The operation of taking uh, VV has, has special significance, and we write this op this notation for the length of v, or it's also called the norm of v, is defined to be the square root of the inner product of v with itself. Now it's critical to note that v v is a non-negative zero or positive number, so the square root makes sense. So let's of course check in the case of the standard inner product v dot w, then the length of v um, is what? Well, if v is given by coordinates a1 through an, then the length of v is the square root of a1 squared plus an squared. And that, of course, is the usual notion of length in, in rn. So that's the motivation for this terminology. And having said that, I want to um, point out something about angles. Uh, we're not going to talk about this too much now, but we'll come back a little bit later. So there's the law of cosines, when, which is the following. In R n with the usual dot product, if you have two vectors, v and w, the way you uh, um, tell Uh, the the way you tell the angle between two vectors v and w, the angles theta, is by the law of cosines, which says that the cosine of theta is given by the dot product v dot w over the length of v times the length of w. So we'll come back to this later, but uh, the crucial point is that it gives you a formula for theta, or more precisely cosine of theta, in terms of the dot product. So, what that says is that v dot w, you can think of it as being, it's, it's a measure of angle in this precise sense. The dot product of two vectors is intimately related with the angle between them, in particular when they're orthogonal, when they're at 90 degrees, is when this number is zero. And so, well, all I want to say about that right now is, is just a little conceptual thing. The whole idea of inner products is that um, what v dot w corresponds to, the ordinary dot product, is the usual notion of angle between vectors in Rn, it's, and also the, the notion of length. And the relationship is given by this uh, law of cosines. And the fact that the length of a vector is uh, given by the square root of v dot v. And so 
what a general inner product is is it's a notion of angle and length in an arbitrary vector space. So that is to say in Rn, there's a notion of angle and length, and it's given by the dot product. But if you're in an arbitrary vector space, how do you talk about the angle between two vectors? You, what In order to do so, you need an inner product. That's what an inner product does for you. Now, an, an important special case is when the vector space is Rn, and so there what you're doing is you're giving a redefinition of the notion of angle and length. You have the usual dot product. That gives you the usual notion of angle. But if I give you a, a different inner product, then I'm giving you a different notion of angle and length in Rn. Okay, we'll come back and talk about that some more later. Uh, so let me illustrate all of this with a key example. This is really a motivating example for this sort of abstract definition, and it, it's intimately tied up with Fourier analysis. So this is where you have an infinite dimensional vector space, and you take, the, take V to be, well, various things, but let's just look at an example of the continuous functions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And we define the, so this is a vector space, we define the inner product of two functions to be the integral of f of x times g of x uh, dx over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And it's convenient to normalize this with a 1 over pi. And I claim this is an inner product on this vector space. So it's an infinite dimensional vector space, but let's not worry about that. Let's just check the bilinear and symmetric properties and so on. Well, it's clearly symmetric. If you switch the order of f and g, you get the same thing. And bilinear, well, I'll just sort of be terse here. Uh, if you take the inner product of f of g1 plus g2, that's the integral of f g1 plus g2. And the way integrals work, that's the same thing as the integral of f g1 plus the integral of f g2, which is the inner product of f g1 plus the inner product of f g2, ignoring my, my 1 over pi and not writing down the limits and all of that. So this is bilinear. The various, this is the main check, there's a couple of others, but this is in fact bilinear. And one of the key things is let's check that it's positive definite. So if you take the inner product of a function with itself, uh, you get the integral of f of x squared dx from 0 to 2 pi. And well, f of x is a real number, so when you square it, it's greater than or equal to 0. So when you do this integral, it's greater than or equal to 0. So that's the positive part. And how can it be equal to 0? Well, only if f is identically 0. So this is a very natural notion of inner product on this vector space of functions, continuous functions, on an interval. So let's uh, do a couple of checks, a couple of little computations. Um, what if you took uh, sine x and cosine x on this interval, for example? Well, if you calculate their inner product, what you get is the integral of sine x cosine x dx from 0 to 2 pi. And I hope you remember how to do this. Um, this turns out to be 1 half sine squared of x from 0 to 2 pi, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And that's 1 over pi times 0 minus 0 is 0. So sine and cosine, their angle, the, their inner product is 0, which is to say they're orthogonal. You think of the angle of them as being 90 degrees. And if you take sine x with itself, what you get is the integral of sine squared x. And I'll let you go back to your calculus books and remember how to do this integral. This turns out you use the identity that sine squared is the same thing as 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. And when you do this integral, you get 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx plus uh, 1 over 2 pi the integral of cosine 2x. And 
I'll leave it to you to check that this six second integral simply becomes zero, and the first integral gives you one. So it's kind of an interesting formula. Okay, well, I hope to have time to talk about this uh, a little bit later, but this is basically the starting point of uh, Fourier series.